Brothers and sisters, we welcome you to the Sunday General Session of the semi-annual Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Vegan Philippines District. Elder Maximo Sabaedra Jr. of the Philippines Area 70 will preside this conference virtually as he asked me to conduct. We express and extend our love and greetings to those who are joining us via virtual and through the Facebook portal of the weekend history. We furtherly hope that the link program provided is shared but to you by your respective unit leaders, organizations leaders, and your ministering brothers and sisters. We acknowledge the presence of our Lawak Mission President via virtual, President Mark Marvin Peterson, and his wife, Sister Kathleen Jensen Peterson. We begin this session by singing hymn number 81, Press Forward Saints, as we accompany by a recorded hymn file of the Tabernacle Choir. After the opening hymn, President Arnold Arce of the Vegan First Branch will offer us the opening prayer. The district business will tackle by our district second councillor of the Vegan Philippines District, President Judy Asuncion. President Samuel Siriban, Vegan District First Councillor, will then present the Melchizedek Advancement. After the district business, I will be the first to share a message, then Sister Kathleen Peterson will also share her message. And then after her remarks, President Mark Marvin Peterson of the Lawak Mission will then address us.
Kung mabigla sa dilami, ang yawang kami di agaw na ito ay may kama nag-gather as one family church. Para kami na ito ay district conference. Magyaman ang midi membership ni. Kaya tinitro siya kaya tinga simbaan. Diyos namin na pagyaman ang midi di commandments. Kaya di plan of salvation yung prepare mo kanya ni. Kaya di natama, gawa tayo ni nga petition namin isang mga sa kanya ni at ang kasagat mo na ulawan kami and ma-inspire kami kiti message na may din kiti leaders kasagat nga petition na kami iti sili kaya karagkat nga magsaan mo iti ngalawad ako pinagpinan ni tapos iti kasagat marami ni iti pagayatang gawatin ni pa yung matuloy mga petition na kaya tarabahin iti leaders sa church tapos iti kasagat Matulungan na kami kayo ma-inline na kami ang kinanayang karabiti umbrayo ni Tito Dawid Dao. Bless mo ngayon din yung desire ni Puspuso ni na ikaw maramid iti manag yung mga agadal ni kayo sa usulong ngayon ng simbahan. I-bless na kami kayo na patuloy na kami na ikaw ni Tikaitan sa Sudo Holy Ghost kayo na edad na kama na iti nararag ni Tito Dawid Dao. Amen. The Conference of Vegan Philippine District, Philippines Lawag Mission of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, held at Vegan District Center, Rivera Street, Santa Elena Village, Barangay 8, Vegan City, Ilocosur, on 13 December 2020. It is proposed that we sustain as General Authorities of the Church, Russell M. Nelson, as prophet, seer, and revelator, and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Dallin H. Oaks as first counselors in the First Presidency, and Henry B. Irene as second counselor in the First Presidency. Those in favor may manifest it by a lifted hand. Any opposed may so manifest it. Dallin H. Oaks as President of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, M. Russell Ballard as Acting President of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and as Member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, M. Russell Ballard, Jeffrey R. Holland, Dieter F. Ockdorf, David A. Bednar, Quintin L. Cook, Dito Christopherson, Neil L. Anderson, Ronald A. Rasban, Gary E. Stevenson, Dale G. Renland, Jared W. Gong, and Ulysses Suarez. The counselors in the First Presidency and the Twelve Apostles as Prophet, Seers, and Revelators. Those in favor, manifest it. Any opposed, manifest it. In all other general authorities, Area 70s, and general officers of the church as presently constituted. Those in favor, manifest it. Any opposed, manifest it. It is proposed that we sustain Marvin, or Mark Marvin Peterson, as President of the Philippines Lawag Mission with Benjamin Kinday Guillermo Jr. as First Counselor and Rodel Rapanot Rosario as Second Counselor. Those in favor, manifest it. Any opposed, manifest it. It is proposed that we sustain Jefferson Pineda Corpus as President of the Vegan Philippine District with Samuel Viernes Seriban as First Counselor and Judy Guzman Assumption as Second Counselor. Those in favor, manifest it. Any opposed, manifest it. As members of the District Council, Ariel Abelia Doctor, 
Roberto Robinol Fahela, Romeo de la Cruz Florentin, Elmer Sayo Nebab, Reynaldo Ula Peralta, Romeo Piano Piedad, Jerónimo Riterne Teresa, Carlos de la Cruz Rapacón, Guillermo Balcarcel Ruiz Jr., Jerome Restopor Seria Serapion, Reynaldo Fuliusco Valdez, Agar Arce Villanueva. As District Clerk, Franklin Spencer Paariopta. As District Executive Secretary, this, uh, Derek Spencer Dion Leones. As Assistant District Clerk and District Technology Specialist, Christopher De La Cruz Onciano. Those in favor, manifest it. Any opposed, manifest it. It is proposed that we sustain as the presidency of the District Relief Society. Maxima Emma Alvarez Alconcel, President. Josephine Coronel Romeo Lazo, First Counselor. And Alejandra Teano Paat Tornton, Second Counselor. As the Presidency of the District Primary, Anneli Quinto Dion Ruiz, President, Marivic Mendoza Corpus, First Counselor, and Mary Ann Rafal Rapacon, Second Counselor, with Epriline Carqueva Kung Riopta, Secretary. As the Presidency of the District Sunday School, Carlos de la Cruz Rapacon, President, Reynaldo Foliusco Valdez, First Counselor, and Romeo Piano Piedad, Second Counselor, with Agar Arce Villanueva, Secretary. As the Presidency of the District Young Men, Ariel Abelia Doctor, President, Romeo de la Cruz Florentin, First Counselor, and Jerome Christopher Seria Serapion, Second Counselor, with Elma Sayonibal, Secretary. As the Presidency of the District Young Women, Charito Mabilo Cahokson Valdez, President, Cherovi Sotosa Asuncion, First Counselor, and German Lloyd Seria Serapion, Second Counselor, with Alma Inamorata Alconcel Nebab, Secretary, and all other district officers as now constituted. Those in favor, manifest it. Any opposed, manifest it. For the information of district members, the number of members of the district serving proselyte, service, and senior missions is 16. Uh, that's all for our district business, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, we are happy to present to you the following brethren who are found worthy to receive the Melchizedek Priesthood Advancement. Brother Jenny de Guzman Tapuru from Sinai Brands. Brother Joel Apolunio Sullivan from Sinai Brands. Brother Joel Agpuldo Tangunan from Sinai Brands. And Brother Joel Wasamot Inu from Sinai Brands. Brother Alan Jake Torres Nobel from Pabugo Brands. Warren Sehalbu Rasiles from Pabugo Brands. Brother Jason Paisti Salarso from Pabugo Brands. Brother Yonilo Ursia Udarbe, Santo Domingo Brands. Brother Denver Ramirez Victa from Santo Domingo Brands. Brother Edison Sanchez Palamo, Vegan First Brands. Brother Victor Castro Rosasena, Vegan First Brands. And Brother Jesperson Maiku Luang from Vegan Second Brands. We propose that they be sustained, <clears throat> Melchizedek Priesthood, and ordain an elder. Those in favor may manifest it by afflicted hand. Those opposed, if any, may manifest it.
My dear brothers and sisters, naibag na bigat iyo amin, maragsakan na dito yung abundaway na makapagbinglay kanyayo iti mensahe, uh, kadeto yung uh, district conference tayo. I am so much thankful also for the technology that we have. Uh, na uray no kadigito yung abundaway, iti pandemia, kaya tagkikita tayo lahat ta, babaeng iti technology. We express and extend our love to those who are joining us via virtual and through the Facebook portal of the Vegan District. Iti topiko nga kayat ko nga i-share kanya yung kadeto yung nagundaway, kaya nukasano tayo nga balin nga ranyag, a light from our challenging moment. Kadi iti challenges tayo, iti abdama. In 2 Nephi, chapter 2, verse 11, the Lord's plan for His children includes living in a mortal environment where there is an opposition in all things. Knowing that opposition and adversity are a common part of life, we can meet and overcome these challenges by remaining faithful to the Lord's trusting to the Lord and trusting Him to help us. In Ether chapter 12, verse 27, says, As we rise above adversity, our weaknesses are turned into strength. Opposition and adversity are a common part of life. There are a lot of challenges that we are facing. Example, this year of 2020 reminds us a lot of difficulties. Katagito yung nga challenges ni panagbiyag tayo, anya, nagiti dapat, anya, nagiti aramiden tayo. Kaya anya, nagito yung nga bambal, anya, nagito yung nga challenges, iti panawin tayo. Number one, nga challenges, adad ka, i climbing actions, political issues and conflicts. At that ita, iti natural disasters like no matandaan nyo, iti naglabas nga bagyo, iti bagyo nga rolling and typhoon Ulysses, racism, and global public health issues. Iso deto iti COVID-19 pandemic. But how we can still be alive despite of the challenges and trials we are facing? This year. Kaya kung uh, i-share ka niya yun, iti upat na principio, principles to understand. Number one is that adversity is part of our mortal experience. The challenges of mortality can help us grow. Number three, maintaining faith in Jesus Christ help us solve problems and overcome adversity. And last, we must endure to the end. Adversity is part of our mortal experiences. Mortality presents us with numerous opportunities to become more like Christ-like. First, by coping successfully with those of life challenges with our common to mankind. In addition, there are also our customized trials such as experiencing illnesses, aloneness, Persecution, betrayal, irony, poverty, false witness, and an reciprocated love. If endured well now, all these things can be for our good and can greatly enlarge our soul, including an enlarged capacity for joy. The challenges for mortality can help us grow. Kunani Elder Jan B. Dixon, who served as a member of the 70, our challenges may be physical, spiritual, economic, or emotional. But if we will treat them as opportunities and stepping stones in our progress, rather than barriers and stumbling blocks, our lives and growth will be wonderful. 
Kanami Elder Richard G. Scott of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, just when all seems to be going right, challenges often come in multiple doses applied simultaneously. When those trials are not consequences for our disobedience, they are evidence that the Lord feels you are prepared to grow more. He therefore gives you experiences that stimulate growth, understanding, and compassion which polish you to your everlasting benefit. To get you from where you were, you are, to where He wants you to be requires a lot from stretching. And that generally entails discomfort and pain. Maintaining faith in Jesus Christ solve problems and overcome adversity. Elder Joseph B. Wertlin said, Even when the winds of adversity blow, our Father keep us anchored to, you, to our hope. In John chapter 14, verse 18, the Lord has promised, I will not leave you comfortless. And in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 2, He will consecrate our afflictions for our gain. Even when our trial seems overwhelming and we can draw strength and hope from a sure promise of the Lord. Be not afraid nor dismayed, for the battle is not yours but God's. The last one is we must endure to the end. In Doctrine and Covenants chapter 24, verse 8 said, Be patient in afflictions, be thou shalt be, for, for thou shalt have many, but endure them for lo. I am with thee, even unto the end of days. Elder Joseph B. Wertlin said, Faithful members of the church should be like oak trees and should extend deep growth into the fertile soil of the fundamental principles of the gospel. We should understand and live by the simple basic truth and not complicate them. Our foundation should be solid and deep rooted so we can withstand the winds of temptations, false doctrine, adversity, and, uh, and the adversity without being swayed or wrote up rooted. Members whose roots are only in the surface of the gospel need to sink them deeper until they reach the bedrock below the soft top soil. Brothers and sisters, kasano tayo nga agbalin nga light katika yung challenging moment. How to become light from our challenging moments. As sons and daughters of God, we have inherited divine qualities. Our premortal experiences prepared us for mortality, where we continue to learn and grow. A mission is a wonderful opportunity to continue developing and magnifying our divine characteristics as we strive to become more like the Savior. Becoming like the Savior is a characteristic that each and every one of us should follow. Anya, digitoy. Ano mga ito? Faith. Faith leads to knowledge and understanding. Another one is virtue. Virtuous behavior implies the pure thoughts and clean action. Knowledge. Of all treasures of knowledge, the most vital is the knowledge of God, His existence, power, love, 
and promises. Temperance. Temperance suggests sobriety and self-restraint in action. It reminds one of covenants made. Another one is patience. We will have genuine joy and happiness only as we learn patience. Brotherly kindness. Kindness pardons others, weaknesses, and faults. Godliness is also in the list. Godliness characterizes each of you who truly love the Lord. You are constantly mindful of the Savior's atonement and rejoice in His unconditional love. Charity. Jesus Christ is the perfect example of charity. In His mortal ministry, He always went about doing good, teaching the gospel and showing tender compassion for the poor, afflicted and distressed. Another one is humility. Humility is essential to the acquiring of spiritual knowledge. To be humble is to be teachable. And lastly, diligence. Diligence is steady, consistent, earnest, and energetic effort in doing the Lord's work. Brothers and sisters, these are the things that we should understand the characteristics of Jesus Christ. I know, mamatia, na nung ito'y mabambanan, kaya't masurot tayo, kaya't maaramit tayo, kaya ito'y gundaway, nga we are facing challenges, iti pa nagbiyag tayo, kaya't ang mo, nagbalin tayo, nga natin kaya. I know, all these things are true, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad to be able to share a message with you today. The President and I are so grateful to have this wonderful gift of serving here in the Philippines Lawag Mission with all of you. President Peterson is the best missionary that I know personally. As a young man, he took his mission very seriously and gave everything for those two years. And during our married life, I have seen him constantly look for opportunities to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know he does it because he loves his heavenly father and he wants to bless others by helping them find the truth. He thinks that being a missionary is fun and he's helped me to see this the same way. One of the ways he has done this is by following a suggestion from President Ballard that he gave years ago. He said to set a date by which to find someone to share the gospel with. President Peterson would set a date on his calendar and then he would pray for the Lord's help and then trust that someone would be put in his path every time his prayer was answered. He has been instrumental in finding many of scattered Israel. I want to share just one of those experiences with you today. President Peterson loves to golf. Before we came here to the Philippines, once a week he would go and play a game of golf or practice at the driving range. There's many different places to play golf and to practice in the city where we live in the United States. But one of these times when President had set a date to fi find someone to teach, he, as thought, came into his mind a prompting to go to a specific practice range, one that he had not been to for a long time. In fact, one that he probably would have not gone to ever again had it not been for the prompting. When he arrived at this practice range, 
He got in line to get his bucket of golf balls, and while he was waiting, he heard two men having a conversation. In the conversation, he heard them mention BYU. Well, that is another thing that President Peterson loves, BYU. It got his attention. And so he began a conversation with these men. He found out that one of them, Ray is his name, played golf on the BYU golf team 45 years earlier. In just a short conversation, President found out that Ray and his wife had just moved to our city and he had just gotten this job at this driving range. Most importantly, President found out that Ray was baptized, a member of the church, while attending BYU. But after that, he never was active in the church. He had never been to church since then. When President left the driving range that day, Ray was all he could think of. And so the next week, he decided to go back and see if he could talk to Ray again. When he, sh when he arrived there, Ray was not there. President found out that Ray was having heart problems. His health was not good, and he could not come to work. President was concerned, and so he asked the other workers, if they could give him his contact number so he could call Ray. But for privacy reasons, they could not give out that information. President did not know what to do. However, the Lord knew what to do. The next day, when President went to work, he found out that Ray had been into our car store a few days earlier and had bought a truck. All customers who buy vehicles from our car store are required to give their contact number and address. President now had Ray's phone number and address. The next miracle was that when Pre President looked at Ray's address, he was amazed to see that Ray lived in our ward boundaries. We live in a very large city in the U.S. What are the chances of Ray moving into our ward boundaries and President meeting him? The Lord was definitely guiding these events. Even though they had only met once and visited briefly, President followed the prompting to call Ray. During that call, President received another prompting to ask Ray if he would like a priesthood blessing. Without hesitation, Ray said yes. President immediately called the ward mission leader and asked him to go to Ray's house with him to give Ray a blessing. When they arrived, an angel answered the door, or at least what looked like an angel. It was actually Ray's wife, Patty. Patty had been raised Catholic and was not familiar with the church or priesthood blessings, but she lovingly welcomed them. She told President that she had been praying that Ray would connect with his spirituality, and she felt that their visit was an answer to her prayer. A coincidence? No, another miracle in this story. The wonderful spirit that was present during the blessing for Ray prompted the next miracle. Patty asked if she too could have a, priest, a, a priesthood blessing. Even though she was not a member of our church, she recognized spiritual power. And during that blessing, tears of joy fell. 
Of course, all of this led to Patty and Ray accepting an invitation to be taught by the missionaries in our home. And that soon led to Patty being baptized and Ray coming into full activity, receiving the priesthood, and then both of them receiving their temple endowment. Do you see how the Lord was able to use president as an instrument in bringing Ray and Patty into, unto Christ? Through president's normal daily activities and in ways that got his attention, golf, BYU, his work, and most importantly, his willingness and desire to help gather scattered Israel. The Lord knew that he could trust President to follow the promptings, and then miracle after miracle happened. Ray and Patty were scattered Israel, but now they have been gathered. They bless our lives so much. Just last week, Patty sent me a video message, and her exact words were, It is crystal clear to me that I am here for Christ. I will do anything for him. Isn't that amazing? Brothers and sisters, your life will be so blessed, blessed more than you can ever imagine, and you will feel your purpose here on earth more than ever before when you help to gather scattered Israel. The Lord needs us to do his work, and it is joyful work. What are you waiting for, brothers and sisters? What is keeping you from being a part of the greatest and most important and joyful work on the earth, gathering scattered Israel? Some say, I will wait until my kids are older, or I will wait for when I am not so busy, or I will wait for when COVID is over. There are so many excuses. President already had a busy church calling. He had a very busy job, and he was a busy and involved father, yet he still made the gathering a priority. Perhaps you feel that you don't know anyone to share the gospel with. President didn't know Ray and Patty, nor many of the others he has helped to gather. He just prayed that the Lord would put someone in his path. And then the Lord did all the work. Brothers and sisters, this work is joyful and easy. You don't have to be a gospel scholar. Our amazing missionaries do the teaching. Just go and love people and help them feel the love of the Savior. This is Jesus Christ's work, and he is doing the will of the Father, and the Father's will is to bring everyone home to him. I know this is true, and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Sister Peterson and I, are trying to find the most delicious fruit in the Philippines. Well, we love the dragon fruit. We love the pineapple. We love the bananas. We love the palmello. And of course, we love the mangoes. We decided that they're all our favorite. And when our family came to visit, we wanted to share these things with them so they could taste also how wonderful they are. The prophet Lehi had a dream about a fruit that he wanted to share with his family. He said it was desirable above all other fruit and was the most sweet. And when you ate it, you felt exceedingly great joy. What was the fruit that was, and why was it the most delicious? Well, we know the fruit was the love of God. 
When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment is, he answered, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. If the greatest commandment and the greatest attribute is the love of God, then how do we develop and increase this love in our own lives? First, we must try to understand just how much he loves us and that we are all worthy of his love. It is unconditional. We don't have to earn it. The Apostle John said, we love him because he first loved us and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. For many of us, the realization of God's love is difficult to feel because of our imperfections and sins. Many of us feel we are not worthy of his love. But Elder Uchtdorf said the following, God loves every one of us, even those who are flawed, rejected, awkward, sorrowful, or broken. God's love is so great that he loves even the proud, the selfish, the arrogant, and the wicked. What this means is that regardless of our current state, there is hope for us. I propose that God's love can be compared to the warmth of the sun. The sun treats all of us the same. If we could move through space, getting closer and closer to the sun, we would feel an increase in warmth. So it is with God's love. As we move closer and closer to him, we feel more and more of his love and desire to please our desire to please him increases we then begin to realize that his commandments are not penalties or restrictions but they are a loving protection for us and a way to show heavenly father that we love him more than the things of the world god said if ye love me keep my commandments obedience to his commandments is a way that we both show and feel the love of God in our lives. As we recognize his unconditional love for us, we also will desire to increase our spirituality through prayer, scripture study, and partaking of the sacrament on Sunday. Our desire to serve others will also swell within us as we want to share the joy we feel through his great love. Jesus taught that the second great commandment is to love our neighbors as ourselves. Our neighbors also include our own relatives and people we know who don't belong to our church. The prophet Joseph Smith said, a man filled with the love of God is not content with blessing his family alone but ranges through the whole world, anxious to bless the whole human race. Brothers and sisters, do you feel the love of God in your life? And do you love him in return? Then you should feel a desire to share that love with others. Missionary work is the way we can do this. Another name for missionary work is the gathering of Israel. President Russell M. Nelson said, the gathering of Israel is the greatest challenge, the greatest cause, and the greatest work on earth today. President Nelson also said, your ability to link the enthusiasm of the missionaries with the loving stability and helpful efforts of the members cannot be overemphasized. In fact, your success will be multiplied as you harness the powers of members with whom you serve. That is called the linking of arms. One of my converts from my mission as a young man became a great member missionary. It was in Angeles Pampanga and her name was Nanai Abana. 
After she was baptized, Nanai Abana told us that she was so excited about the gospel she had received and so grateful to her Heavenly Father that she wanted to share it with others. She felt God's love. She was a very busy lady because she had to work at her job every day to provide for her family. But she was determined and said, I have faith in the Lord. And I know that even though I'm busy, I, if I still find time to help the Lord, he will bless me greatly. She did not let I'm too busy become her excuse. But then she said, elders, I don't know what to say to them. And I'm kind of shy. And we said, don't worry, we'll share all the messages. All you have to do is introduce us and we will do the rest. And she said, wow, that sounds so great and not too hard. Let's go right now and talk to some of my friends. And we asked her, should we make an appointment first? And she said, no, if we make an appointment, they will probably just hide, say they're too shy. We'll just go to them and ask if we can share a short message of hope and love. So we went to the houses of Nanayabana's friends. We asked them if we could just share a short message to help them in their struggles. Some of them said yes, and some of them said no, but we were so kind to all of them. And they were all glad to see us, and they all became our friends. Well, I was transferred from An Angeles a short time later, but I never forgot Nanai Abana. She was filled with the love of God, and she was a great example of what a member missionary should do. About six months later, I was serving in another zone, and for zone conference, the mission president bought, brought a special guest speaker. He said the speaker was a great member missionary and had brought 75 of her friends and relatives into the church in the last six months. I was so shocked when I saw that the guest speaker was Nanayabana. Her joy and the love she had for God and for those around her was incredible. Well, brothers and sisters, our missionaries want to link arms with you so badly. Because of COVID restrictions, your referrals are the only way the missionaries will have someone to teach. Some of you have been very helpful and have given referrals. Thank you so much. Now we need more of you to help. If you've already tried before, Will you please try again? The Lord loves effort, and he will soften the hearts of others according to his perfect timing. I promise you it will not be too hard. Our missionaries will do the teaching. All they need is for you to take them to your family, friends, and neighbors who are not yet members of this beautiful gospel. Do it because you love the Lord. And you know he loves you. Do it because you want to share the most delicious of all fruits. I close with the words of the prophet Moroni. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray unto the Father with all energy of heart that ye may be filled with this love, which he hath bestowed upon all who are true followers of his son, Jesus Christ that ye may become the sons of God, that when ye shall appear, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified, even as he is pure. Amen. I say these things, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At the conclusion of the conference, we express our sincere appreciation to all those who work diligently to prepare this kind of facility and set up 
of the conference via virtual and FB live. A meaningful and historical event. We also thank those who give messages to this session. We now listen to the concluding remarks of our presiding authority, Elder Maximo Sabaedra of the Philippines Area 70. After this, his message, our closing hymn will be found on hymn number 206, Away in a Major, as we accompanied by a recorded hymn file of the Tabernacle Choir. The benediction will then offered to us by Brother Geronimo Keresa, member of the Vegan District Council. Amen. Uh -huh.
Good morning to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters. Last year, when I knew that I will preside the Vegan District Conference, my heart leaped for joy as I anticipated to set foot in the historical heritage that is vegan. When the pandemic came and the prospect of physically being there seems near, my joy was not dampened. In fact, my heart is more full of thanksgiving to Heavenly Father for this opportunity to be gathered together, even by virtual technology. The thought of being with you today, even virtually, is just incredible, knowing that we are all connected through our spirits. Maragatan nakman, na makidin, na kulap kada kayo amin. Makita dagit na ayat, na rupa kin, itibosis yu. Ngim palubusan dak, na Nga dumanon iti puso yu, kin ikarag ko nga ni Apo Diyos ti dumanon iti puspuso yu, kin arakupen na dagiti kararuwa yu, kabayatan iti panangangay iti laytoy nga panagtitipon. During these trying times, my heart and mind are one with you as we face the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic. All of us fear the unusual times and seemingly bleak prospect of the future as we fear for our lives and unsure of our livelihood. Sisters Avedra and I grateful every day and consider it a miracle that we are still alive and in good health despite our exposure in the hospital and to our patients. I am comforted indeed that our God is a God of miracles. This pandemic has brought us to our knees and brought us to master all the strength that we have to ensure the safety and well-being of our families, relatives, and friends. As we hope that none of us will be infected by this virus, we try our best to give heed and follow the health protocols, namely wearing face masks and face shield, physical distancing, frequent hand washing and sanitation, staying at home, avoiding crowded places, and many others. But we realize that more than the COVID-19 pandemic that have paralyzed the world is the virus that infects the soul and paralyzes the spirit of men. The question that we need to ponder is, how can we protect ourselves from the spiritual virus that will conquer our souls? What spiritual protocols do we need to follow just as we follow health protocols? I am reminded of Captain Morona in the Book of Mormon, when he faced the great opposing forces of the Lamanites, who continually threatened their liberty and their lives. In the Book of Alma, we learn in chapter 48, Yea, he had been strengthening the armies of the Nephites and erecting small forts or places of resort, throwing up banks of earth round about to enclose his armies and also building walls of stone to encircle them about, round about their cities and the borders of their lands, yea, all around about the land. Additionally, in Alma chapter 49, now at this time, the chief captains of the Lamanites were astonished exceedingly because of the wisdom of the Nephites in preparing their places of security. These two verses give us a glimpse on how to protect ourselves, build all around ourselves places of security. Our living prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, declared, quote, similarly, a storm will rages around us. We need to create places where we are safe, both physically and spiritually. He explained further that our homes, the state of Zion, and the temples are places of security. Today, I pray that our hearts will be drawn to the Savior, Jesus Christ, as we plead to receive the strength and wisdom in order to establish these places of security, namely, our homes, the temple, and our state. May our hearts be open and our minds be enlightened that we will understand these things and act upon the inspiration that comes upon all of us. First, our homes become the first line of defense. May we ask ourselves these following questions. Is my home safe from spiritual calamities and turmoil? Do we observe spiritual protocol 
like frequent daily family prayer and scripture study? Do we wear faith mask and faith shield as we embrace the new normal spoken of by our prophet, President Russell Nelson, when he said, if you really want to embrace a new normal, I invite you to turn your heart, mind, and soul increasingly to our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. The Come Follow Me program is one great blessing that came to our lives, especially during this pandemic. It testified that indeed President Nelson is truly a prophet of God and speaks the mind, the will, and the voice of God because all of us have been prepared to learn the gospel every day with our families long before this pandemic came. It is like having Sunday school every day. Because of this, our homes truly have become a sanctuary of faith, a place of security, and a place of safety. Every day, I feel and experience the multitude of tender mercies from God, and I feel the Savior's love. I have learned from your district presidency that many of you are doing the Come Follow Me. Please continue, brothers and sisters. You are all indeed establishing a place of security in your home. The next safe place, a fort with stone walls, is the temple. In Doctrine and Covenants, section 109, we read, And we ask thee, Holy Father, that thy servants may go forth from this house, armed with thy power, and that thy name may be upon them, and that glory be run about them, and thy angels have charge over them, that no weapon form against them, shall prosper, that he who diggeth a pit for them shall fall into the same himself, that no combination of wickedness shall have power to rise up and prevail over thy people, upon whom thy name shall be put in this house. And if any people shall rise against this people, that thine anger be kindled against them, and if they shall smite this people, Thou wilt smite them. Thou wilt fight for thy people as thou didst the day of battle, that they may be delivered from the hands of all their enemies. Because of the covenants that we have made and the ordinances that we have received in the temple, we can be armed with this power and the angels have charged over us to overcome the temptations and enticements of Satan. This power is no ordinary power because it is the power of godliness manifested unto men. President Nelson said, Where can we go to hear him? We can hear him in the temple. Indeed, we hear his voice inside the walls of the temple. This voice guides us to safe path during these turbulent times. I admonish you, brothers and sisters, to treasure the covenants you have made in the temple in your hearts. Holding a current temple recommend is an expression of our love for our family and to our Savior and Heavenly Father. Do the best that you can with all your might, mind, and strength to renew your temple recommend. Today is the day to act wholeheartedly, to do within your power, to get hold of that temple recommend. Let us return to the temple. Let us all run to the temple. Although travel and quarantine restrictions prevent us from returning to the temple nowadays, the bearing of this temple recommend is more than enough to protect ourselves and our families from the spiritual virus. I consider it as a vaccine that produces long-lasting and fast-acting immunity from the spiritual pandemic. Lastly, the state of Zion definitely is a place of security for all of us. I have learned that vegan districts soon will become a state. Indeed, you are already the vegan state and should act as one to reach this righteous goal. In Doctrine and Covenants section 115, we learn that the gathering together upon the land of Zion and upon her stakes may be for a defense and for a refuge from the storm and from the wrath when it shall be poured out without mixture upon the whole earth. Why is it that vegan state becomes a refuge in defense? Stakes are a defense from enemies both seen and unseen. The defense is the direction provided through 
through the priesthood channels that strengthens testimony and promotes family solidarity and individual righteousness. All the ordinances in the state are under the watchful care and authority of one man we now know as a state president. The power of godliness manifested through these ordinances will then be received by individuals and families and thus they become protected and secured of eternal happiness in the worlds to come with our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. President Boyd K. Packer said, We speak of the church as our refuge, our defense. There is safety and protection in the church. It centers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Latter-day Saints learn to look within themselves to see the redeeming power of the Savior of all mankind. The principles of the gospel taught in the church and learned from the scriptures become a guide for each of us individually and for our families. Today, no one is spared of the effects of the pandemic, particularly to our livelihood. Some of us lost our jobs and our businesses. Our earning capacity in one way or another has been affected quite significantly. What will be our defense? In basketball or any other sports, it is said that the best defense is a good offense. What will constitute a good offense? It is obedience to Heavenly Father's laws and commandments. In Doctrine and Covenants section 130 it says, it is declared there is a law irrevocably decreed in the heaven before the foundation of this world upon which all blessings are predicated. And when we obtain any blessing from God, it is by obedience to that law upon which it is predicated. More specifically, obedience to the law of tithing holds promised blessings across different times, whether in abundance and more so during economic difficulties. The book of Malachi comforts us about windows of heaven being open when we pay a full tithe and the promise of God when he said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I have faith that the devourer in many of its forms will be rebuked. The devourer could be threats to our farms, businesses, calamities, employment, even the danger of COVID-19 infection. Let us all be faithful and hold on to the promise of the Lord when he said in Doctrine and Covenants section 82, I the Lord am bound when you do what I say, but when ye do not what I say, you have no promise. This video tenderly demonstrates a remarkable faith by obedience to this law and how it blessed the lives of President and Sister Amogis in Bohol. Lisod man ito ka ito kinabuhi, pero kung nagtabang ta sa ginoo na sa ilang mga bulhat ito, makonsider tayo, obedient ta sa sa ginoo na huwag man itang participate sa iyang bulhat ito na magbayad of tithing, maghatag o paso piring. So, sa mga abis sa gabmay na mag-income, pero naghimog yan pong mga patan. So, mga blessing ba na unexpected na sa mga kinabuhi na kanang taga din ar bato kita baho may bisaon na kanang di bato yung kanunay kanang sa usaka kwartir matabaho may mga lokasiman na within kanang kuhan 2 years o 3 years umane pero mara basta naghimo lang may nga na dya karun expected na usa na may kanang bambu bata kontraktor na direct do may samuan na kami mag-manage sa karun na bago ko narsiri na kami mag-rise ang budget, kihatag na sa mga kami magpadagan. Pili sa buhol, so kinanglan ang mga bambu kay pabrikit niya sa mga construction materials, mga kuwan, so ano mga bambu yung mga tiles, sa uh, wooling, sa mga kuwan. So, kasi sa ingon, sa gino, sa malakay na 
uh, i-prove na to na uh, kung masulundon mata sa iya. Uh, so, kay abrihan yang gangaan sa langit. So, usa na mo na ang pagtuog yun na may nakatabang na mo na kung hindi manabatuan nga. So, may mag matter kung sa mga blessing. So, ang amo lang, taga-alami ka pa sa kapalawas kay mamang dyan ay una na itong Panginalang. So, ang tao kung luya. So, masawa na ito pagka-earn sa itong pamilya o sa itong kawalingan kung kung ano iso. Kaya na masalig lang tas gino na maghimo or titisipita sa inyong mga bulatan. So, manay mga blessing na dawat po naman. So, as far as ang uha mo na wala may magalisod na muhatag taiting kay ang among gibuhat ang na may kanang jar na kuan so every every day na mo income eh. so magulog mi sa mong 10% sa sudlanan so mana mo so nabatasan na namo nga na so kay para at least kung tipuno nimo ah, maglisod man ka sa kung mudako na siya one snack every day ni mong gihimo ah, dili sa bugat kay wala naman to sa imo ato ana man gisod na nimo sa sudlanan so manay sa sa mga manay mong kuan para easy way na maka himo gimi sa kuan pagbayad of tithing we, we know that that is a commandment of god so god says um kun higog mata sa iya so we can show and find a way and we cannot serve god Uh, without being that lighting especially because we cannot help um, building his kingdom here on earth kung dili um, bayat ana ng part so para sa amo because we love god uh, bisan man nga nag nag atubang takaron sa pandemic pero bisan um, ha, kung husband wala siya permanent income um, sa iyang ginagmay nga kita ko na siya daily nga makita amo jud ang isulod sa small jar para masiparate na siya. Madili gid mi ma-temp nga mo gamit ni Ana. Although kiabot ang lockdown for how many months, naagud ang kwarta na intact gid na siya nami. Kay kay bawo mi nga there is a way and there is a blessings nga gihatag sa Ginoo sa amo as long as we pay and we love the Lord. May kasi nga ang Ginoo nga sulay ko kung dili ba mapun ang inyo. Wala na ipanudlanan ang inyo ni Malay. So we know, dili man mira to, pero we know nga uh, we can survive and we can we can find way nga uh, makasustain me sa among panginginan. God will always answer our needs. Kaya in every time nga uh, mo kita siya bisan gamay ka bisan 200 o 100 o 50, wa ana na ko siya sa persyento. Ug ako na siya isulod sa jar. Kay nga naman, kay kung imo na siyang tigumon Kapalit ni mo na siya, lisod na mag-recover. Kahibaw man ta, Satan will always do his part. Nga para, mm -hmm. dilit na to ma-obey ang, ang commandments. Muna nga, sa, among, sa ako nga part, I always nga gi-advise sa akong family nga mabayad yun ta. Okay. Kaya this is one way nga uh, maka, makatabang ta sa gingharian sa ginudari sa pagdudutan. Kaya although, Niabot ang time nga lockdown ping akong ex, ang akong principle is that bisan lockdown wala mo lockdown ang Ginoo wala mo wala mo nang ang Ginoo sa iyang commandments that is why we are we are doing our part and among a challenge nga sa tanan nato nga do our part love god especially and kana lang nga bisan ginagmay nga ginagmay nga income We have to see to it nga bisan piso lang na siya ibutang nato sa jar para nga pag-abot sa time na maintak nato ang atong tithing. Hmm. Kay God will always show the blessings nga ihatag niya sa ato. O wala ko nagduha-duha ni ano. This pandemic is giving all of us a time to refocus, recalculate, and refresh our divine power as sons and daughters of God, created in His image and likeness. 
Let us be reminded not to fall asleep and not think that the work of the Lord has stopped and everything is paralyzed. Indeed, I testify that what Sister Amogi said is true. She said, even during these times of lockdown, God is not locked down. The chapel of the meeting house is not the church. The church is you and me. All of us constitute the church. All of us stand as one body and as a church. So the church can be anywhere as we gather together or even as an individual. The Spirit is as strong as ever, and the love of our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ for us are tender and wide more than ever. As covenant children of God, His promise will stand today and tomorrow. President Nelson declared, quote, And He loved those who will have Him to be their God. And what is the Lord willing to do for Israel? As quoted in Doctrine and Covenants, He said, the Lord has pledged that He will fight our battles and our children's battles and our children's children's battles to the third and fourth generation. By sounding this alarm, we are warned, but we do not fear. In fact, we see the silver lining during a cloudy and stormy day, knowing that Heavenly Father is at the helm. I know He will fulfill His promise, and that promise is glorious for those who commit to let God prevail in their lives and strive to hear Him every day. I invite you to ponder these words and give heed to the whisperings of the Holy Ghost as we consider how we can build and establish places of security, our homes, the temple, and our state. I invite you also to obey the law of tithing, which will rebuke anything that hinders our capacity to earn and provide for our families. In this season of Christmas, may we look up to the light of Christ as our most incomparable and precious gift, a gift that encompasses everything, all that we are and all that we hope for. Jesus Christ is, is Heavenly Father's gift for all mankind. His mercy and grace give us strength and heals us that we may all be able to return to a Heavenly Father with our loved ones. Our God is a God of miracles. It's my solemn testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen.
namin na sa langit, kami po'y nagpapasalamat sa pagkakataon ito na nakatil po kami sa aming district conference at nagpapasalamat po kami ama sa binigyan nyo ng pagkakataon na mapakinggan um, namin ang mga speaker namin ngayon at hiniling uh, po namin na matapas masangin po kami upang sa ganun maging successful o ma uh, i-apply namin ang napakinggan ngayon itong district conference hiniling po namin na Patuloy niyo po kami na gabayan at ilayon niyo po kami sa mga kapahamakan lalo na itong sakit na pandemi. O sa ganun, may pagpatuloy namin na aming responsibility sa aming pamilya at sa inyong simbahan. Hinili po namin na patuloy niyo po kami na gabayan sa aming pagsiservisyo, sa aming mga uh, kapitbahay, mga kaibigan, lalo na po ang mga aming relatives. So, pag sa ganun, maging example kami para karoon sila ng pagkakataon na maging member po sila sa ayit ng simba. Patawarin niyo po ang aming mga pagkakamari, nagawang uh, witnesses, Ganon, maging malakas kami at maging karapat-dapat kami palagi sa inyo karapat. At hinihili po namin na sa aming pag-uwi, tapos pasalim po kami upang makaupi kami sa aming bahay na marusog at walang uh, malayari sa amin. At lahat ito, hindi uh, na dalangin sa pag-